right, well, praise the Lord, we are right at 7 o'clock. Um, my notes did not get any shorter this week, so we're going to go ahead and get started up. Amen. Good to see a good group of people here on Wednesday night. I actually had a couple of other people reach out asking how they could follow along. And just a reminder that Chip, thanks again for helping out with this. Uh, we are recording these uh, sessions and uploading them to our YouTube channel, so they are available. Previous sessions are on there as well. Uh, for, I guess, about what, the last couple of years, we've been meeting back in the the training room doing small group style studies, but uh, I think we needed a change and I'm enjoying this type of teaching. Um, I'm, I'm a pulpit preacher, so anytime I get to stand up here and, and, and I know teaching becomes preaching quite often when we're doing this, but it's just whatever in this series or direction of teachings, whatever we want to call this right now is Holy Spirit have your way. Uh, so doing the same way with my studies and everything else right now, but let's do this. Um, Let's open up with prayer. Again, a little different. We're not just going to round table stuff. Please reach out to us if you have specific prayers. Let us know. We're here to pray for you anytime. Uh, most of y'all have got my personal phone number. You've got the text and church phone number. You've got Facebook connection. You can message. You can email. There are so many different ways that you can connect with us. Um, if you have needs, if you have prayer needs, please, please reach out to us anytime. Amen. That being said, just raise a hands in here. How many people has a prayer need for yourself or somebody else today? Amen. Well, as we open up in prayer, what I need you to do is speak to the Lord with that. The Bible says the effectual prayer of a righteous man avails much. Amen. If that prayer is for you tonight and there's some things that you need to clear up with the Lord while we're praying, why don't you just go ahead and do that right now? Amen. Because just like that. Can I preach for a minute? Just like that. Y'all know when I started doing that the first time? It's when Jesus said, and I saw Satan fall like lightning. I can envision Jesus saying that, and I saw Satan fall just like lightning. And we know that God can move that fast, and we know that God can move that fast in forgiving you of sins and setting yourself in the right place with God. We just talked about alignment this past Sunday. We start talking about choices. You can get in that alignment right now. So if you need prayer tonight, Pray for yourself as we're praying afterwards. If you need to do some time around these altars, there will be plenty of time. But let's go to the Lord. Father, we bless you. We give you glory and praise tonight. We thank you for this time to come together. We thank you for the time to come together and share your word. Thank you for being able to come together in fellowship, Lord. But Lord, thankfully, most of all, that we can come together and be in your presence tonight. Lord, as you said, where two or three are gathered, we know that you are in our midst. So we thank you tonight for being here with us. We know that the Holy Spirit is here because we've got spirit-filled believers filling this house today. But you came in with each of us. And today and tonight, we just give this whole service over to you. Have your way, Holy Spirit, in us and through us, through this teaching and through our time together. Lord, I know there are needs around this house. And I pray right now that you are hearing each prayer as it's being lifted up. God, that you can hear all of our needs one at a time and you can move in them just as fast. And I, and I pray tonight, Lord, for you to move quickly. We know that we have church family that is dealing with different things from health to uh, deaths in the family right now and many different things. But Lord, we just pray for you to be with each one. So Lord, tonight, we just again, we give you glory. We pray for, Lord, just exactly what you want to be said and you want to be done, to be done tonight, Lord. Pray for understanding. Pray, Lord, tonight for the Holy Spirit, again, to lead and direct. We pray for us to be able to have open minds to what your word says and what you say. We pray tonight, Lord, for leading of the Holy Spirit. We pray tonight, God, that you will just move in a great and mighty way. So, Lord, we bless you and we thank you for all you do. And it's your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. 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 So before we get into the notes, and y'all don't get onto the back page of the notes yet, and I know that just makes you want to look as soon as I say that, but don't don't turn. So don't be looking at the back page of the notes, okay? Can't, can't read ahead on this. That's the reason I try not to give y'all notes too early, because y'all want to read ahead. Now everybody's like, what's on the back page? My back page is different than yours, so. Um, at the end of this, I don't have all of my notes in your notes. I have some scriptures. I have some definitions. I have some nice Greek words in there. And if you start looking through the Greek words in a little while, you'll notice the pronunciation guides are, are my pronunciation guides because I'm so bad with this, I can't even use the pronunciation guide that's in the Strong's Concordance. I have to go back and listen to the audio version, and I write out my own 
pronunciation guys so in some ch chance I might be able to come close to it amen but I just want to start off tonight your notes is going to say this the baptism of the Holy Spirit and thought to be extinct and I gave you that definition last week so I decided I needed to stay with it but it's coming at the end and not the beginning because I'm still working on foundation right now is y'all's house up yet is your house built already still working on the foundation that's a good thing. That's a good thing. You don't want them to rush that foundation, do you? Amen. I started noticing our house is as old as me, and all of a sudden this week I started noticing that the back door won't stay open. And just uh, so, mm, something's sinking there a little bit somewhere. But but we want a good foundation in this teaching, and we're in, what is this? Four weeks now? Four, is this our fourth week in here? Or third week? I can't remember. Third week? I'm third week in here. It's going to still be a while. Um, not rushing through this. We want to hear what the Lord has to say. And He has to say a lot um, when you start reading the Bible. And I'm not giving you all the scriptures that we could use, but I want to start with a question tonight. And if you could help me out this by raising hands, how many people in here have been baptized and water baptized? How many people have been water baptized in here today? Praise the Lord. I think that's pretty much everybody. If there's anybody that has not been baptized, let me know. This isn't full, but the pond is next door. We can go over there. Um, I'll get Brian to help because I'm not messing with those turtles in there, okay? Um, but we ask this. I ask everybody has been baptized. Okay? Let me just ask the question. Why? Why were you baptized? Why, why were you water baptized? you all just shout it out. Obedience. Obedience? Okay. To, obedience to whom? To the word, okay. Anybody else? Why were you Why were you baptized? Okay, to be born again. Okay, we want it. Well, number one, I think it's because Jesus said for us to be baptized, right? Um, some scriptures that I got on here. Let's read these. Matthew twenty eight nineteen. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus said we make disciples and we baptize people. Mark 16, 16 says, He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. So again, here's Jesus saying we need to be baptized, right? Uh, doesn't seem to be much debate over water baptism. Pretty much uh, all Christian faiths believe in water baptism of some way, shape, form, or fashion, and most agree that it is a Christian right or ordinance and it's an outward expression of an inward change of our life, a life that was changed by salvation. And it's not something that leads to salvation itself. Now, there are some groups that believe that that's when you're saved, is when you're baptized. But we believe that baptized is just an outward expression of our faith. That we have died to our old self, been buried with Christ, and rose again into new life. So, again, any, any conflicts with that? Okay. Baptism, to be baptized. I guess as you're getting into some of your Greek words on there, the first one's the easiest one. Baptize is baptizo. That's a pretty easy one. It don't get any easier the rest of the night with those, I promise you that. And when you start looking and there's, you know, with that, you start talking about being cleansed by water. But when you start looking at what it means, baptize means fully immerse or to be overwhelmed or to overwhelm. Now let me ask you this, those of you who have been baptized, did you feel overwhelmed? when you were baptized? Did you feel the presence of God? Did you feel that when you came up out of that water, like, oh, something changed in my life. Amen. I've shared that. Um, I've been, I got baptized twice. I was one of those folks that got re-baptized. The first time I got baptized was um, in October and it was cold. And I got baptized in a galvanized horse trough. And the high temperature that day was in the 40s. And I was told that they were going to heat the water and they didn't tell me any difference until I sat down in the water and I drew up into a knot. And I was like, well, this is cold. And when I got baptized, when I went under the water, I saw a bright flash of light. And I was like, whew, I must have experienced God. Then I found out that was hypothermia. <laughs> and that was one of the signs of hypothermia as you see a bright light. But I felt overwhelmed. I really did. Um, I would like to tell you it got a lot better for the second time I got baptized. My second time I got baptized was in a church. 
that had a baptistry much like this that had a heater and all that good stuff and I was told the water was going to be nice and warm <laughs> until my before I even got in the water the preacher said I got some bad news the heater doesn't work it's cold Elisha could you check out the back pew over there okay. um Pastor Mark sneaking in. Pastor Mark, you need to pay attention to what's going on up here, too. We might have to do some rebaptism around here. I'm not sure yet. But shenanigans are still going on. But anyway, we, we, we sometimes we do that. We feel that overwhelming experience when we get baptized. And I believe that's the presence of God. Us going into a deeper place with God. I talked on Facebook yesterday about deeper. And I'm praying that for you that you want to go to a deeper place with God. But we, when we baptize, we believe in full immersion baptism. Amen. We don't sprinkle. Amen. We don't sprinkle. We're, we're, we're full dunkers. Amen. And I'm one of these preachers. I don't even stand on the outside of the baptistry and do that. I'm, I'm in there. Amen. I want to be in there where the anointing is. And when we do this, you get wet all over, head to toe. There's no doubt. I've shared with y'all. I had the one girl that got in the baptistry and I got ready to baptize her. She said, you're not going to get my hair wet, are you? I said, what do you mean? And she said, well, I don't want to get my hair wet. I said, well, don't worry about it then. And uh, when I went to baptize her, she was going to argue and fight. And I said, well, let's just go. I just had to go a little bit extra. I was like, no, no, no. We're going to make sure all of you is covered with this. Just like I want to be fully covered with the blood. But you get covered with the water. You're filled. Every, every pore of your body is filled. So we start talking about baptism. Fully immersed to overwhelm. And we all agree water baptism because Jesus said it. We're going to do it. So if this is so widely accepted by the Christians worldwide, why is it so hard for people to receive the scriptures when we're talking about the baptism in the Holy Ghost. And I've been building this and I'm, and I'm going to keep going here, but why? Why is it, Pastor Mark, that we will take one thing that Jesus said to do and we won't argue against it, but we take another thing, oh no, we're not doing that. Well, I want to look, and I've got your scriptures in here with you. Pastor Mark, do you need a copy of notes? I think Melissa may have, you got notes already? Okay. Let's look at a few scriptures. Matthew chapter 3, verse 11. This is John the Baptist talking about Jesus. He said, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I am not worthy to carry. He will, y'all say that word with me, will. will. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit in fire. Amen. Amen. Let's look at Acts chapter 1, verse 5, right behind that. For John truly baptized with water. Now, this is Jesus talking now. He, he's coming right behind this, and he's saying, For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Now, we've used this same scripture a few times in the past weeks, and we will continue to do so. And then moving into Acts chapter 1, verse 8, which is one of my all-time favorite verses. But you shall receive power... When, not if, but when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Amen. So we were talking before about the Great Commission and we're talking about this, how Jesus is telling us that we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit to effectively fulfill the Great Commission. This is just all Jesus. So baptize. This is the same word. It's just in a different context. Instead, we're not talking about being fully immersed in water, but we're talking about being fully immersed in the power of the Holy Spirit. Can I hear an amen so I know somebody's with me out there, right? Okay. Um, I know this gets a little bit deep, and it's Wednesday night, and they all probably worked all day, but I hope this comes in and encourages you instead of makes you want to go to sleep. I, I hope that there's something here. It's like, you know, you know, I, have, I have to confess, I've been bad since Saturday. Halloween candy is... I have been so good since May. Not eating. I can say no to ice cream. But this Halloween candy floating around there, it's just... So, I need the power of the Holy Spirit in my life. I See, this is why I'm like, I want y'all to be as excited about this as I was a bag of Halloween candy to bring the smoke home. Okay? And out of sight, out of mind didn't work either because I knew exactly where it was in the kitchen cabinet. 
and and I was hearing voices, and it was coming from Tootsie Rolls, and I had to. <laughs> so there's no more Halloween candy in the house. Praise God for that. But I'm, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm excited about this, and I want y'all to be that excited about this as we think about it. Um, being fully immersed in the power of the Holy Spirit, be baptized in the Holy Spirit. That's kind of what we're talking about tonight. We said we we're going to talk about Pentecost. We'll talk about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. I, I want to kind of just define it. Lay it out what it is. Again, we're building a foundation to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. It can be confusing. People may not understand exactly what it is. But just we talked about being baptized. We take pictures up here after somebody's gotten baptized. We put towels on the floor. We do all this because there's water dripping everywhere after we do a baptism service. There's pictures on Facebook and the people soaking wet head to toe. There's, there's no doubt that they just got baptized. There's an evidence that they have been baptized. Amen? So we, we know that there's an evidence when we've been water baptized. So wouldn't it just be sensible to think that once we've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, that there will be an evidence with that as well? And this is the part where people start looking at me real funny and they start thinking I bumped my head and I've gone crazy and I knew he was that crazy Pentecostal preacher and now he's going to start talking about this speaking in tongues. Y'all take a sip of coffee. Take a deep breath. We're just touching on it tonight, okay? Acts chapter 2, verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Amen. Now, you've got notes coming up. You've got the same thing I'm looking at. I've got some definitions here coming straight from Strong's Concordance. If you don't have a, a, a hard copy of Strong's Concordance, it's easy to get it online. It's free. There's free online Strong's Concordance. You can type the word in, search, go by, all this stuff. But these are, you can, you can, you can fact check me. You got any, I know we got some fact checkers out here that y'all waiting to fact check me and make sure this will go. Go find this on Strong's Concordance. Concordance here. So Acts chapter 2, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. I want to break this part down for you. Filled, when you go into Greek, it just means that they were filled. They were filled. Um, to speak, uh, they were filled and they began to speak with. To speak with. Laleo is the Greek word here. It means to utter articulate, uh, articulate sounds. Okay? To utter articulate sounds. That's what happens when we speak, right? We utter an articulated sound. Um, I'm trying to be more articulate in my speech. Okay? I'm trying to slow down and enunciate my words a little bit better. I want to make points with this. That's one reason tonight I'm pointed in enunciating words properly and slowing down. So to speak, they were, they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak. In other words, to utter articulate sounds. And I've said this a few times leading up to this. One of the most important words in this is speak with other tongues. And I want to talk about that. Other. The Greek word here is so important. For us, it doesn't it don't sound like it means that much of a big deal. But in the Greek word, other is heteros. Which means this. is two parts. Number one is a language as in quantity to number as opposed to some former person or thing. So it's about um, another language. It's about, it's about you have your language and now this is another language. But it's also about quality. And this is the most important part. That is one not of the same nature. This is what I want people to understand and embrace. And I've got more to go with this because I want you to see this tonight. This other, these other tongues, these were not a natural language. And this is what, that's why that word other, heteros, is so important that we don't leave that out and we take a quick look at that because it means it's not a natural language. And then we get to the word tongues, which means glossa or glossa, the language or dialect used by a particular people distinct from the other nations. Okay. This is one of the good parts when we start looking. Who, who gave the utterance? The Holy Spirit. Okay. Where's the Holy Spirit from? From God the Father. God, he's from heaven. Okay. Y'all think of these? So he's going to bring us a language from a, distinct from other nations. It's going to be from his nation. Okay. But okay, speak with these other tongues as the Spirit gave 
All right, and that word denomai, to furnish or endue, to cause, perfuse, or give forth from oneself. And I don't think y'all get as excited as I do about word study. But when I get into this, I'm like, okay, as the Spirit gave, for God so loved that He gave His only begotten Son. Now y'all get all excited about that. That God gave of Himself. He gave of Himself. He gave us His only begotten Son. Adam was a created son. Jesus was His begotten Son. Jesus was born of a woman. Adam was created from the dust of the ground. So this is something that God gave of Himself when He gave us His Son. Amen. And now we find the, the Holy Spirit, as we see this, as the Spirit gave, gave us utterance, as He gave, He gave forth from Himself. He gave us part of himself. The utterance that he gave us is coming from him, okay? And he, endued, he furnished it. He gave it to us, the ability to do this. And then the word utterance. Now, this is the one y'all got to give me a minute because I wrote my own little thing down here. Apothegama. See, y'all like the way I wrote that out so you can read it there. Apothegama. See, I've got my own line, Strong's Concordance, with the little uh, pronunciation guide on there. Now, I'm just guessing he's saying it right because I wouldn't know because I don't speak Greek. I thought it was... Um, I used to go to the Greek restaurant and order um, gyro sandwiches. <laughs> They're gyros. They're gyros. They're not gyros. And I always wondered why in the Greek restaurants they looked at me funny and said, let me get a, G let me, let me get a gyro. They just look at me. You know they're laughing when I live. <laughs> but apathegama, this is the utterance. Not a word of everyday speech, but one belonging to dignified and elevated discourse. Can I say this? It don't get no higher than God. Amen. It don't get no higher than heaven. Amen. We start talking about an elevated discourse. It don't get any higher than that. Amen. Amen. Not a word of everyday speech, but one of... Belonging to the dignified and elevated discourse. What we're talking about here is a, a heavenly language. Or a spiritual language. Okay. We're not talking about normal everyday speech of man. Said that. Get back up to hear my scripture one more time and read this um, again. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Amen. The Spirit had given them a language to speak. And this was a spiritual language. This was a heavenly language. And this is what we're talking about when we're talking about speaking in tongues. Amen. Now, not necessarily to get confused with when we start talking about the gift of tongues. We're still getting there. We're talking right now that language is like a personal language. This your, that you're going to speak. That the Holy Spirit is speaking through you. And I've got more. We're, we're still, we've still got probably two nights when we get into the gifts of talking about tongues. But tonight this is what I want to go with this. The Holy Spirit gave us this utterance. This heavy, heavenly language. So I ask you to see this information. And allow the Holy Spirit to move freely. Not based on tradition. But only on God's word. Amen. Amen. And then I know some people said, well, I don't think that's God's word. You're speaking Greek to me. Well, the New Testament was written in Greek. So it's pretty important that we speak Greek about this. Because if we're not looking at what the original Greek meant, we're not getting the full context of it. We're, we're just up here. We're, we're using American words that, that don't work, that don't translate over as well. Let's read on a little bit. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Okay? That part where we just read that just a minute ago. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. I want to talk about that. That has come upon you. And this is another one. This is my pronunciation guide. Let me see if I can get this one right. Because this has got one of those <laughs> sounds in it. Epechomai. Epechomai. Brenda knows she sees me put my headphones on. And I'll hit the play and I'll listen to them. And I'll put it back. What did he say again? So it says, of the Holy Spirit descending and operating in one. So what does it mean that you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you? That means when the Holy Spirit descends and, op and, and begins operating in one. Amen. 
There's a difference between being saved and being baptized in the Holy Ghost. And this is something that the Lord gave me today. I got excited about it when I was putting my notes. This, this was fresh, and I put this in here, okay? When one gets saved, when somebody gets saved, you receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes to dwell in you, to abide in you, to live in you, okay? All right? When one is baptized in the Holy Spirit, they become a vessel that the Holy Spirit works through. Okay? Not just he's not just a resident, but he's an operating partner. Operating in the power and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. That's what happens when we get baptized in the Holy Ghost. We are now operating in the power and the gifts of the Holy Spirit, moving from the natural talents and abilities into supernatural manifestation. This is where we're at. We're talking about that supernatural stuff again. I've, I've talked about supernatural a little bit on Sunday mornings. We're going to be talking about a lot of supernatural on Wednesday nights because this is supernatural. This is outside of the plane of our abilities. This is outside of what we control. This is all about what God can do and will do through us. And he gives us the power to do this through the Holy Spirit. And this is about as simply as I can explain this, the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And it's all right here in the Bible. This, this is the thing. It's all right here in the Bible. And we just have to dig a little deeper to see the original context of it. Now, I know in this church and in this room, we've got people from many different backgrounds as far as spiritual backgrounds and, and Christian upbringings. Um, I had none. Amen. I had no, I had no Christian upbringing. I, I knew just enough to get me in trouble and I could misquote a few scriptures that most people did. You know, I knew that Jesus was born on Christmas and Santa Claus brought us toys. And I, I knew that Easter had something to do with Christianity, but it was about the Easter Bunny. It was, it was that's, what, that's my upbringing. But when things changed in my life and I sought the Lord, and He was not very hard to find because He was waiting on me. And God knew where to plant me, and it was in a Pentecostal church. And I'm going to be honest, I'm just going to be honest with you. I had a family full of Baptist preachers. Okay, and as we've talked about this, and some of you have testified that you've heard the same thing as we've talked about this, as I've heard the same thing about those crazy, some of those crazy snake handling Pentecostal tongue speaking people. You know, you don't stay away from them because that's the devil. Okay, and I still remember. I didn't know that the church I was in was a Pentecostal church until one day this preacher was talking and all of a sudden he said something. I was like, <laughs> and I went back in the Bible line and I'm not going to testify about all that. And I told you all I got confused because I thought everybody's Bible was on the same page. And when I was cheating trying to find what page number of people in front of us. But I was like, that must, he must be having a different kind of Bible because that's not in this thing I'm reading. And then I heard it again and I was like, Speaking in tongues, isn't it? And I was like, okay. I didn't take off running. It didn't scare me. I was like, okay, I want to learn more. I want to learn more. All I knew was some things that some people had told me in life, but I didn't have a clue about what the Bible had to say about it. So I started reading the Bible, and I started asking questions, and I started being led to these scriptures about all this stuff about the baptism and the Holy Ghost. And I said, hey, I want to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. It didn't just happen that way for me. I had a lot of I had a lot of stuff in my mind that I had to work through. But it's here in the Bible. And God knows how I work, and I would have not been satisfied with something if somebody's telling me stuff and I, oh wait a minute, but look right here. Here's what it said. What about this where it says, Well, don't worry about that. We don't talk about that in here. We're going to talk about that in here. Amen. And I want you to talk about it in your life, and I want you to talk to God about it. And I want you to start praying about it. And I want you to start asking God, if you don't believe what this says, asking God, well, why is it in your word? Because like I said, it's right here. We just got to dig in. Acts chapter 2. I'm not going to read all of this, but we see the outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the upper room. We all know the story of that. I can, I can read it if we need to. 120 people. After Jesus said, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Then you will be witnesses for me in Jerusalem this day of Samaria. He said, go into the upper room and stay there until you receive the promise of the Father. 
the promise of the Father. I usually, I like to use that, and back in probably May of this year, we talked about this, and we talked about the promise. The promise is the, the outpouring, the infilling power of the Holy Ghost in our lives. And we see the outpouring in the upper room. We saw the people get filled with the Holy Spirit, and then they, they spilled out into the streets, being witnesses just as Jesus told them, that when the power comes upon you, you will be witnesses. They couldn't hold it in. They spilled out into the streets and they were running around doing what the Pentecostals do. They were praying and shouting and speaking in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Amen. Now let's go back. I talked about this. I, I, I should do this. i got a paper copy up here too. I keep me a paper copy. And we, I want to go back up here and I want to find this part. Um, not a word of everyday speech, but one belonging to a, to dignified and elevated discourse. El, the utterance, the heavenly language that had been given by the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, I told you this, he endued it upon us, but he gave forth from himself. In other words, he gave us a little bit of his language. Amen. He gave us a little bit of his language. This a language is spoken in heaven. And it's something that maybe I don't understand, but God understands it. And there's a place in the Bible we're not going there yet, but we will. It says that there are things that we don't understand, but God gives the Holy Spirit gives us utterances that we may speak directly to God, and He knows exactly what we need. Amen. And if, if there's something I don't know how to express myself, do y'all always know how to express yourself? Do you always just know exactly what to say? Do you always know exactly what to pray? Do you ever just wake up in the middle of the night and you just feel this urge upon you, Lord, I really need to pray, but I don't know what to pray right now. And you're just sitting there and you can't find the words and you just sit there for a minute and you're trying to pray and you don't know what to pray, but you give yourself just a moment and allow the Holy Spirit to speak through you and you're going to hear a pray like, prayer language is a lot different than when you're saying, oh, Lord, I need a new car. Lord, I need some money. Lord, I need my relationship fixed but when you just start praying and you allow the Holy Spirit to speak through you you're going to hear something altogether different because it's a heavenly language amen and this is when we saw this they started speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance it wasn't their own words it wasn't their agenda oh my it wasn't their agenda they were speaking what God wanted to be said by the Holy Spirit giving them the utterance. And here is where the division begins to take place in Christian churches. This is where the doctrine, the doctrine gets formed and starts bringing some division. Acts chapter 2, verses 5 through 8. Let's read this part. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven, and when this sound occurred, the multitude came together. And let's read carefully. And you can, this is New King James, but you can open your King James. It says the same thing, basically. <laughs> and they were confused because everyone, everyone being the multitude, everyone, this is that multitude, the, the Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven, everyone heard them speak in his own language. Okay. Everybody heard them. In their own language. Then they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look, how are not all these who speak Galatians? And that's a derogatory comment. We, made, we, we talked about that earlier in the year. And how is it that we hear? How is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? Now, I want you to think about the conversation that they're having. They're talking amongst themselves. They're talking about people from other, other people groups, people from other languages. And what's happening here, some doctrines are going to tell you that they were speaking in other tongues. It, it simply means that the Holy Spirit empowered them to communicate with other people in the natural language that the other people spoke. But I don't think that's what the, I don't think that's what the Bible is saying here. And I want you to read this. That's not what Scripture supports. That's, that's what tradition supports. And I ask you to go back again and read this, but read it with an open mind. It says that everyone heard them speak in their own language. And they're talking amongst themselves. There's different people. And there, there's one guy, Dick's over there talking, and there's six different people over there that all speak different languages, but they're all listening to Dick. He can't talk six different languages at one time, can he? 
No, he's speaking one language, but all of a sudden all these people are here and they're hearing. They're hearing in their own language. Because there's not, there's not that many people that was in the upper room that's out there running around speaking in tongues that there's all these thousands of people out there and all these different language groups out there that they're over there taking their time one by one to speak in all these different languages. No, they're all coming out and they're speaking the same heavenly language. They're speaking in the tongues that the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. And what's happening is there's this power of God there and God's allowing something to take place and these men are hearing this and it's shocking them. It's rocking their world. They're like, wait a minute, what is this? I don't understand. They're saying something, and I know what they're saying, but I can't understand how they're how I can understand that. So I believe that I believe that God was pouring out some some uh, interpretation there, you know. And God can do what He wants to, Amen. And what it says is that every man heard in their own language, and that was the marvel: one man speaking, and many nationalities understanding. Now, I cannot explain to you how each man heard in his own language. Okay? So, if I can't explain, that means it's not true, right? I can't explain it any more than I can explain eternal life in heaven. I can't explain it any more than I can explain virgin birth. I can't explain it any more than I can explain the Godhead. I can't explain it any more than I can explain to you the way a cell phone works. Because I have no idea. But I sent all y'all text message on it a little while ago. Right? Did y'all get my text message? Encouraging you to come. All I did was type it in and hit send. I have no idea what happens from there. I, have, I, 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 I don't know. But I trusted it was going to work. Amen. Problem is, the world trusts cell phone more than they trust God. The problem is the world trusts technology more than they trust the Holy Spirit. We trust tradition more than we trust the recorded Word of God. And, and there's, there's a problem with this. Again, I, I have faith to believe in God's Word. I have faith to believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit is for believers today. Amen. Amen. Can I ask this because we're a small group of people in here. And we, we talked about, I think everybody raised their hand has been baptized. How many, how many people in this church have been baptized in the Holy Ghost? Amen. Amen. So see, there's other folks here that you have not received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And now I want y'all to know I'm not the only one that's crazy up here talking about it. <laughs> there's all these other people that have experienced these same people that you come to church with and you come to small groups with and you go out to eat with and you love and you talk to them and you want them to pray for you and all this stuff. And it's like, so this real thing that happens, this definite second work of grace of the Holy Spirit filling us to give us this empowerment to operate in the gifts of the Spirit. Amen? And that's what we're getting into next. But we have to be able to have this. Let me read on just a little bit. I believe that this baptism of the Holy Spirit is still for today. Somebody asked me why I believe that. Because the Bible says so. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Right? You believe Jesus loves you? Because the Bible says so? Do you believe that the baptism of the Holy Spirit is for the church today? Because the Bible tells you so. Yes. Acts chapter 2, verses 38 through 39. Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. The promise of the Father, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the promise of the Father, not just eternal life in heaven, but to be baptized in the Holy Ghost so we can operate in the power of it. Amen. And we start talking about the initial evidence of speaking in tongues. Now, Pastor Mark, you can probably, you can probably chime in on this, but if, if we just didn't talk about speaking in tongues, half the people that have a problem with Pentecostals wouldn't have problems with us anymore. They like the divine healing part. They even like the prophecy as long as it's good news. Don't bring a Nathan up in the picture. But all this stuff that they like, they like the praise and worship. You like a loud, shouting preacher. But if we start talking about speaking in tongues, and why do we talk 
about it is because the Bible talks about it. And there's so many places that we see the evidence of a person speaking in tongues directly after they have been baptized in the Holy Ghost. Amen. And we will talk more about that. But before we move forward into talking about the gifts of the Spirit, we need to address what happened. What happened in the, in the world where all of this, as people were being filled with the Holy, even the Samaritans, I mean, people were being filled with the Holy Ghost. And people, and, you know, they're going out, have you, have you been filled with the Holy Ghost? We didn't even know there was a Holy Ghost. Well, you do now, be filled. And people began being filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues and prophesying. People were going out doing the work of ministry. And we just see all these people being filled with the Holy Ghost. It wasn't just the people in the upper room. Everybody was being filled with the Holy Ghost. That's the way the church grew. That's the way the church became in power. But what happened? What happened to this promise of the Father? And why did people stop receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Well, you can look on that page now. I told you all not to go because I've got the answer on there for you. I got a color picture. That, and it, the picture, it's not as cute in that black and white picture there. But I want to introduce you all to this little fella. He's called the Laotian Rock Rat. All right, before you read, don't read. The Laotian Rock Rat. How many of y'all have ever seen a Laotian Rock Rat? Art, you were in Vietnam. You were probably closer than anybody else. That You might have seen one, okay? But um, this little rodent, the Laotian Rock Rat, here's the, here's the crazy thing. This rodent was said to be extinct over 10 million years ago. Biblically, we're not even going to say the earth is that old. Okay, but regardless of where you stand on the age of the earth, I'm a little bit upset because nobody ever taught me about the Laotian rock rat. And y'all know I love animals. But when I was in school, nobody ever told me about the Laotian rock rat. Let me see if anybody else is as bad as I was. I, I used to have this green box that had these cards with all the different animals on them. And I got a different pack of these things like once a month and you filed them by the, the genesis and the species and had all these color pictures of all these wild animals throughout the course of the world. Did anybody else remember that growing up? I loved that. And I had the whole set of that and I would just sort through and look at these animals and I loved all, do you know about the Laotian rat? Rock rat? Okay. Well, see, nobody ever talked to me about it. It was, it was like he never existed. Okay. So I didn't. I never knew, Pastor Mark. I never knew there was a Laotian rock rat, even though it was supposed to be extinct. But then, in 2005, all of a sudden, it was rediscovered. Something that was supposed to have been extinct for over 10 million years is what the article said. It's now rediscovered. And now it's being taught in science classes worldwide that this animal that was thought to be extinct, it's not just this one. There are many examples of this, of animals that were thought to be extinct for hundreds, thousands, millions of years. Then all of a sudden, hey, I'm not extinct. Here I am. Been here all the time. As a matter of fact, you start, when you study about this, they're talking about how the scientists thought that these people, these rats had been extinct for so long. Said, but the people of Laos said, oh no, we've been eating them in restaurants for years. As a delicacy. Elisha's over there looking like I might have ate one one time. But that was a, that was a Trinidad coconut tree rat. He was, he was trying to get my coconuts and I, I ate him. In Trinidad, if it, if, if, it could, if it couldn't outrun Elisha, it got cooked. <laughs> roadkill. You never saw a roadkill on a road in, in, in Trinidad. Something got hit, something got hit. That, that was lunch on the go. Amen. But again, it's my, my point about this is, is for, for all these years, nobody talked about the Laotian rock rat because somebody made the decision that he didn't matter anymore. Somebody made the decision that he was extinct. And again, people just didn't know and they weren't taught about it. So nobody taught me about it. And I've never taught anybody else about the Laotian rock rat until today. But I felt obliged once I found out that there was a Laotian rock rat. And you can go to Laos and you can eat one in a restaurant now if you want to. I ain't going to Laos. Uh, that's not happening. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm iffy on squirrels. Okay, I've eaten squirrels before, but they're, you know, take that tail away. This, this. But the same thing, we start talking, they, 
they just quit talking about this rat. And it's, nobody knew about it. And for all these years, nobody talked about it. Nobody experienced it. Nobody knew about it. Okay. So in much the same way, the early church, the early Catholic church, universal church, the original church was the Catholic church. Again, unity was supposed to be one church, universal church. That's where the name Catholic comes from. Peter became recognized as the leader of the church, okay, which later became known as the Pope. And even the Catholic Church itself has acknowledged now that they misread the original scriptures that, that named Peter to be the rock on which the church was made. They've actually admitted that they misread that. But for tradition for all these years, um, recognizing the Pope, and with the events of the first Pentecost Sunday, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the Catholic Church began forming their own doctrine. Okay, we have doctrine. First thing we started, I was teaching on doctrine. If you go to a Baptist church, they've got doctrine. You go to a Methodist church, they've got doctrine. You go to an Episcopal church, they've got doctrine. The Catholic Church, they have doctrine. Everybody has doctrine. Okay, so when they were writing their doctrine and they were forming their, their doctrine, their teachings, their official beliefs, this is... They said, this is what we believe and this is what we're going to teach. They decided that the infilling power, the baptism and the Holy Spirit, was only for the Pope and the bishops. Okay? Because their view was that it happened to those that were in the upper room and it was poured out onto the, the disciples, the apostles. And since it was poured out on those persons, that's who it would be for in the church. Okay? Not fussing about the Catholic Church. Don't give me mean looks about there. It's not about that. This is, I'm talking about the early church. This is what happened. Somebody made a decision. Well, they, they made Peter the Pope, and he was the first one to be filled with the Holy Ghost and be speaking in tongues and all this. So it's not for everybody. It's just for our leadership. And this is this is confirmed. This is You this actually read this right off of a Catholic, uh, Catholic official website. So they, they said that this was only for the, for the Pope and the bishops. So they stopped teaching about the promise of the Father being available for every believer. It just wasn't taught. It wasn't taught, so people never heard it. So you take a period of roughly 2,000 years, and nobody was taught about a promise of the Father. Nobody was taught about a baptism of the Holy Ghost that was available for you. Nobody was taught this, about speaking in tongues. Nobody was taught about... The gifts of the Spirit being for the laity, for the people in the pews. Amen? So basically, for over this, over this period, people didn't know, so the Holy Spirit basically was thought to be extinct. Except in power of the leadership of the church. And this was a power that was reserved basically for the priesthood and not for the laity. Okay? Until it was rediscovered. The power of the Holy Spirit was rediscovered again in the late 1800s, early 1900s, and what we're going to call the Pentecostal revival. Started talking about um, Azusa Street. We started talking about people being filled with the Holy Spirit, the fire baptized church coming around, and all these things started happening. People, but people got hungry. You know what happened? It's like somebody's reading the Bible one day and they say, Well, look, I know y'all, what about this? What's this promise of the Father that you're talking about? What's this baptism? What's this be baptized in the Holy Ghost? Well, they said it was not just for the Pope and not just for the bishops, but it was for everybody. Amen. As many people are far off, was continue to be called. So that means it should be available for me, right? Well, you know, hey, sounds right. It's in the Bible. If it's in the Bible, maybe we need to pray. Maybe we need to start praying and start asking God, God, if this is for me, I want it. And people started praying, and people started believing, and people started researching, and people started getting filled with the Holy Ghost. And you know, even the Catholic Church itself has had a bit of its own charismatic revival. And, and there's a division within the Catholic Church over that. Because people being, and there, I mean, there was a bishop that I read about that went to a Pentecostal revival, got filled with the Holy Ghost, came back speaking in tongues and prophesying. Amen. So then they started, and they started getting other people fired up. And so even within the Catholic Church, um, there's a, there was at one time, I don't know if it's still, a spirit-filled Baptist church just a couple miles down the street from here. Where all of a sudden, people started getting filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues in this con traditional country little Baptist church down the road down here. And so what happened? Somebody started asking some questions. And then the next thing you know, people start praying and people start getting filled with the Holy Spirit. And again, the Pentecostal revival began. So, I want to share a little bit of a business law with you. How, 
I just, tonight, this thought to be extinct. There's been a lot of questions, not just here, but worldwide, is, well, if the Holy Spirit was for us and God wanted us to be empowered, why did it ever stop? Why did it ever stop? Tradition of man stopped it. People stopped talking about it. People stopped teaching about it. People stopped preaching about it, okay? So there's this business law, and I learned this many years ago when I was in a restaurant. It's about institutional knowledge, okay? It says you take an employee that has 100% knowledge of his job, and he trains another person. There is going to be a 20% loss of institutional knowledge to that second employee, okay? So you've got somebody, if I know how to do it all, and I train somebody to the best I can do, that person, if, if they pay good attention, they're going to know 80% of what I knew. Okay? All right. Now, if that person in turn trains another person, there's going to be another 20% of institutional knowledge lost. Now, that third person is only going to know 60% of the job. Okay? Person number three. And y'all worked public jobs. Y'all know this is how it works. <laughs> You don't know what you're doing and they got you training somebody. Can I get an amen? Okay. I've been there. So now you've got employee number three that has 60% knowledge of his job. Hey, can you train this new guy that just came in? Oh, yeah, sure. Now he knows 40% of the job. Before you know it, he's trained to somebody and now you have self-checkouts in Walmart. <laughs> because people can't even check out groceries anymore because they know, well, I don't know. What, what are these numbers? What's this barcode? was a barcode. And so we start looking. So we, we start thinking about this. what's happened over the years as we start handing down traditions and we start getting, if we're not if we're not sharing the truth of God's word, the whole truth of God's word, is there any wonder we, we can start complaining about the next generation? Have we done what we need to do in preparing the next generation? We have to be responsible now for what God is sharing with us through his word. My word says that we need, in order to be the church that Jesus wants us to be, we need to be spirit-filled people. Amen. And operating in the gifts. You know, you need to get, just get over the fear, the speaking in tongues fear. It's not that big of a deal. I mean, people, little baby, the first little guy the baby makes, people just go, oh, did you hear what he said? But they'll get worried about speaking a heavenly language when the Holy Spirit gives you utterance. And I'm praying. I'm praying for our church. And it's about to spill into Sunday mornings real quick that we're going to see this Pentecostal revival taking place in this church. But again, this is why it's so important that we go back to the original training manual, the Bible, and read what the Bible has to say in order to obtain all the information and all the knowledge and all of the power to effectively do our job to go into this world and make disciples. Amen. And I want to close up here tonight. I've kind of tried to keep this intentionally a little short tonight before we start getting into the gifts of the spirits. But I got, I want to read this to you. This is from our church conference leadership. I gotta find it. Should have brought the computer with the big with the big print. Um, Greg Amos, our conference bishop, Dean Morgan, our assistant superintendent, and Morris Smith, our director of discipleship ministries. I sent these guys a text together. And I want to read exactly what they said. So let me find it. See all these text messages y'all send me all the time? I got to find them in here. Shouldn't be that. So I'll, I'll share with you what I wrote to them, and I want you to hear. I want you to hear their 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 answers. I love our church. Our, I love our conference leadership. They're they're down to earth, approachable people. I appreciate. We talked about covering a little bit some different things, and I appreciate the fact that I can reach out to our conference bishop and he replies to me within an hour. And, um, and so my my wording is question for you, wise men of God. In your studies, teachings, or thoughts, why for so many years from historical New Testament Bible days until the Pentecostal revival era did people cease to be filled with the Holy Spirit and operate in the gifts? 
And I said, we're doing a Wednesday night teaching, starting with doctrine, moving to the person ministry of the Holy Ghost, and wanted to include some thoughts from our denominational leadership. And I'm, I'm be, here's what I said. I said, we're working to break down some old traditional strongholds in this area. Amen. And I've been praying that this week. So Greg Amos, our conference bishop, he sent back. And he said, God's timing. Y'all believe in God's timing? Cairo's time. God's timing, the same reason that Jesus didn't come until the time chosen by the Father. God has always existed, but he chose how and when to reveal himself. His desire was for a relationship with, with a people who genuinely loved him, not because they had to, but because they wanted to. He chose to reveal himself through the law, which showed us how futile it was to try to be perfect. He sent his son to provide, to provide the price for our redemption. He sent the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truths, all in his time to reveal his great love for us. Amen. Dean Morgan, who was also over our school of ministry and was our, was our primary teacher, uh, he comes in, good morning. He said, I believe there has always been a Pentecostal witness, just not as demonstrative as the Azusa Street Revival. I encourage you to do some study on the Azusa Street Revival. He said, maybe people were so caught up in culture of their times that Pentecost and the manifestations were not as important. If we aren't careful, we could go through another dark ages where Pentecost may not have a priority with us. May that not happen to us again. There was always a hunger for all the, for all the Lord had. May there be a great hunger today as for all, for all that the Lord has for us today. Amen. I'm trying to stoke your appetite. I, I'm praying for you to get that hunger to receive all that God has for you. Amen. And then Mara Smith. I'm very close to Mara Smith. And Brenda knows this, and it's like, Morris is the sweetest man in the world. And, and I read this, and I just, I hear, I can hear Brother Morris. And it's like, I, I can't even read it without hearing his voice. And he's so soft-spoken. And he doesn't get angry. And I was like, I, I've told him before, let some of your anointing rub off on me. Okay? But Pastor Morris says, I've noticed the sacred baptism does not carry the emphasis it did back in the day. Some full gospel churches have settled for the hyper-grace, seeker-friendly movement has not helped. In fact, I believe it has killed the power in some churches. I think, we need a re I think we need a revisiting on the focus of the purpose of the baptism and how to posture and prepare ourselves for him to possess us. It's power, not just tongues. See, it's power, not just tongues. Last, this is a big one. What were the 120 doing in the upper room when the Holy Spirit was poured out? What was Cornelius doing in Acts chapter 10 before the outpouring on the Gentiles? How was the Gentile household prepared to receive? Saul, Acts chapter 9. Of course, the answer is prayer. I believe that though the I believe that throughout biblical history that tarrying in the presence of God made the difference along with his timing and will. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled. And then he just said blessings. So I wanted to share these things with you. And I've shared with you tonight what God says through his word about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And throughout the book of Acts, you will continue to see. If you haven't read through Acts, read through Acts. It doesn't take you that long. Read through Acts and see how many examples there were of people being filled with the Holy Ghost throughout Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And to Monroe, North Carolina. And to all these different areas. That it is God's will for us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. To be baptized, fully immersed in the power of Amen. Amen. I want to pray. Because when Pastor Morris, when he reminded me, they were in the upper room. They were praying. What, 10 days, Pastor Morris? 10 days. 10 days in unity. <laughs> 120 people. Started off probably more than 120 people. Y'all remember Jesus was seen by more than 500. But there was only 120 in the upper room. After, after his resurrection... Before his ascension, he was seen by more than five, more than five hundred at one time. But then, in that upper room, there was only one hundred twenty people when the outpouring came. But they were praying and they were believing and they were waiting for the promise of 
the Father. And tonight, I want to offer to pray with you. Last week, we had a great move of God around these altars. And I believe we can do the same thing again tonight. If there's anybody here tonight that wants to pray, wants to pray to be filled with the Holy Ghost, just wants to pray for the church, wants to pray for the church as a whole, to pray for the strongholds to be broken down and that we can see this outpouring of the Holy Spirit again. Amen. Amen. If you'd like to come down to these altars and pray, I'll pray with you. If you just want to pray where you're at, we can pray. But I want to pray. And let's pray. Father, we pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Lord, we pray for the strongholds to be broken down. We pray for the, the years, the centuries of tradition that have, have kept us separated from the power which you have promised us, Lord. Lord, we've said many times, whatever it is that you promise, we want to receive. We don't want, to, we don't want the church to be anything less than what you have designed it to be. Lord, we are so thankful that you said that we shall be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then we will become effective witnesses for you in all areas of the world. And Lord, I'm praying today. I'm praying today, God, for people to find understanding through your word, Lord. I pray that even tonight, Lord, that through your through the Holy Spirit, that people can feel this connection. I pray, Lord, that, that new new light has been shined on this, Lord, and, and opening up more questions, Lord, and people to want to seek you. And Lord, that would be my prayer. If anybody has questions from this, Lord, let them let them dig into the word. Let them read the word. Let them pray over these verses that we read tonight, Lord. And just allow you to just illuminate the things in their life. And this, Lord, reveal the Holy Spirit in their life, Lord. And God, we don't want to just be a house for the Holy Spirit, Lord. We want to be business partners. Amen. We want to walk in the power. We want to walk in the calling. We want to operate in the gifts, Lord. We want to be the effective ministry in this world. We want to be the change makers that this world needs, Lord. We want to be the answers to the prayers of the world, Lord. People are reaching out and they're asking and they're seeking things and they don't even know what it is that they're, at, they're looking for, God. But what they're looking for is a church. What they're looking for is a, a church filled with spirit-filled believers, Lord, that are able to go out and effectively work in the, in the callings of the world. Lord, I pray for the gifts to be poured out into the believers of this church, Lord. I believe for those that come, and, and we need that word of wisdom and that word of knowledge, Lord. We all need discernment in this day and time, Lord. Lord, your word speaks about even the very elect being deceived. We don't want that to happen, so we need that spiritual discernment in our life, Lord. Lord, we need to lay it on the hands. We need, this, we need prophetic word. We need prophetic tongues. We need the interpretation, Lord. We need all of the gifts that you have for us, Lord. And Lord, you said that you give the gifts as you, as you choose, Lord. You said we're a body of believers, many-membered body of believers, Lord. Functioning together as one perfect whole. And Lord, I pray today. I pray for hearts to be, I pray for hearts to be broken for the world around us, Lord. I pray for us to not be satisfied any longer with just, with just simple religion. I pray for us to no longer be satisfied to just show up, Lord. I pray for us to no longer be satisfied with just hanging in there, Lord. But we won't be satisfied until we're standing up making a difference to those around us, God. We won't be satisfied with being half-filled, Lord. But we will only be satisfied when we are full, Lord. We'll no longer be satisfied with being lukewarm, God. But we're going to be all in for you, Lord. Fully immersed, baptized, Lord. Baptized in the Holy Ghost, Lord, and in fire. Lord, speaking in tongues and prophesying and laying on of hands, Lord. And I pray, Lord, just as you said in the Great Commission, that as we go out preaching the word, that the signs will follow those who believe, Lord. And the signs, Lord, these are what's going to confirm the word, Lord. And people are going to see this, God. And people are going to see the change in the people here. And people are going to see the power of God working through us, Lord. There's going to be a difference in us individually. There's going to be a difference in us corporately, God. Lord, that in this church... It's not going to be the same church that it was two years ago or two weeks ago, Lord. But when we walk in here, people are going to feel the presence of God. And Lord, that these altars will be filled, Lord. And people will come to see what is taking place in this church because, God, something supernatural is taking place. We won't be able to explain it away, God, but we're just going to embrace it and have faith to believe that it is of you and of your will, God. And Lord, I pray for those here today, God, that are not, have not been filled with the Holy Ghost. Lord, I pray today, God, that they will just lay themselves before you today. Say, here I am, God, fill me with the Holy Spirit. Lord, let me be your vessel. Let me be your vessel with the power of the Holy Ghost to go into this world and be your instrument, to be your hands and your feet. 
So God, I pray today, Lord, that the words that were spoken today that have resided in our hearts and in our minds, Lord, that we don't walk out of here and forget these today. God, I pray for anybody that sees this recording in the days or the weeks to come. That, Lord, even in, the, in their, their house or wherever it was that they were watching, Lord, that they would just pray. If you would just release that promise of the Father to them, be filled with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, Lord. And there would be no confusion, Lord, because you are not the author of confusion. Lord, I pray for understanding, Lord. I pray for that in this house. I pray, Lord, to casting down the strongholds, Lord. I pray that the veils of the eyes be removed, God, and people can look and see your word and see your will, and that there would be no questions, God. But, Lord, I pray that from this day moving forward that every time we come together, Lord, that people will be seeking more of you and to be used more by you. So, God, again, I pray for this body of believers tonight, Lord. I pray that you stir up the gifts within them, yes. the ones that are already filled with the Holy Ghost. I pray, Lord, that you remind them of who they are. I pray, Lord, Lord, that you remind them of who you've called them to be. Lord, again, stir up those gifts within them and let them start using them, Lord. Not something just to be sitting on a shelf, but something to be put into practice, God. And Lord, for those that have not been filled with the Holy Spirit, I pray, Lord, for good, a good word to come soon, Lord. A good report to come soon, God, that people have been filled. Lord, and we get testimonies, Lord, and we see the signs and we see the wonders taking place all around us every day. And Lord, I pray for those in this house, Lord, that have needs. God, we know that you are the, the author, the finisher, Lord, that you are the giver of all good things, Lord. I pray for anybody in this house that needs healing in their body, Lord, that through the Holy Spirit today, God, that we could just release that into them, Lord, and we could see miracles taking place. Lord, that's another gift that we talk about is the gift of miracles. And Lord, we're believing for that to be manifest in this house. We're believing for miracles and for, Lord, the word of those miracles to go forth and to bring glory into you and to bring people, the curiosity seekers, Lord, if that's what it is, to come into this house and see what the Lord has done. So tonight, God, as we pray, tonight, God, as we pray, every person in this, Lord, you know the hearts, you know the mind. And Lord, we just turn ourselves to you today. We submit ourselves to you today. We say, here we are, Lord. Fill us today. Lord, for those that, again, that are filled a fresh outpouring, a stirring within us, God, that we can become more operational in the gifts of the Spirit. Become the church instead of just coming to church. So, Lord, I do pray. I pray again tonight, Lord, as seed has been sown, Lord, let it not be snatched walking out the door. Let it take root. Be, let it be in good soil tonight, Lord. And let it produce fruit. As we talk about fruit of the Spirit is one of the things we'll be talking about very soon. But Lord, let us embrace this, let us embrace this power that you give us. Let us be filled with the Holy Ghost and let us operate in the gifts. But Lord, we do this not for not for us, but we do it for you, Lord. We do it for your glory. And we do it because it's your calling. We bless you today, Lord. We give you all the glory in this house, Lord. We release it right now, Lord. Lord, you just break down any strongholds, whatever it would be. Lord, is holding anybody in this house back, God. Lord, that we just we don't look through the natural eyes, but we look through the spiritual eyes, Lord. That we hear from you, Lord. When we open your word and we read it, Lord, we're not just reading words, but we're receiving the breath of life, Lord. Breathe upon us each and every time. Lord, we bless you tonight. We bless you tonight. We bless you tonight, Lord. We bless you in this house, Lord. We lift up your name and we give you praise and glory tonight. Lord, hallelujah. Lord, hallelujah. Lord, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Release your gifts into this house, Lord. And we will give you all the glory. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I believe I gave you two hours worth in an hour tonight. Amen. I hope I gave you something that you can go home and pray about. If there's anybody that lacks understanding, seek understanding. If there's anybody... If, you got the scriptures. If anybody needs any additional copies of just what my notes are, we can get you copies. It's not a lot. I don't write the book form. I write in note form, so it doesn't always make sense to people. But if you need copies, I'll give this to you. Amen. Can we just give the Lord a hand clap of praise in this house? Amen. Amen.
So this is one of those we're going to close this part of the service. And you guys are welcome to hang around and fellowship a while. Pray if you need anything. I'm still going to be here. But we love you. I'm believing to see some new things happen in the Rock Worship Center very soon. Amen. And God wants to use every person in here. And he has great plans. Amen. God bless you guys. There's still coffee about there. If anybody needs a coffee for the road or if Garrow needs another cookie. Yeah.